Hey, it's 2008, and it's the holiday season. I am Ed Conley. This is Tyler Schmid. He is a professional chef. I am a professional bum. And what we have going on here tonight is three appetizer dishes for your holiday party. Tyler, why don't you tell us what we got set up tonight? Gladly, Ed. I got some butternut squash manchego cheese quesadillas with a chipotle sour cream. Fantastic. I have a smoked salmon spread with fried pita chips, and Ed is going to try one of those right now. Seems great. While we're taping. Um, I also have a cranberry and great. Granny Smith apple chutney on some brie and some French uh, bread. Did it surrender? <laughs> it surrendered. It dropped its gun and flailed off running. Right. Butternut squash. Butternut squash, which you just basically have. Do you have to peel them? You, no, we leave the peel on. All right. We yeah. have them. And then pour we it out. Take out the seeds. Right. We got some garlic. We've got a whole onion. Five, six cloves of garlic. Whole. We're going to take that. And Ed, why don't you do the honors? Uh, we don't Drizzle a little olive oil on it for me. No, it's fine. It's fine. No, it's not. Get it right. Turn that lid again. Yeah. I'm sure glad that's around. Okay, right. is that enough? That's or is perfect. that too much? That's perfect. All right, so we just drizzle the whole thing. Drizzle the whole thing. Nice, nice little amount of uh, olive oil. Just get it nice and. and we're doing the oils onions up. too. Oh right? yeah, you want it. You want everything to get roasted up real nice and caramelized and sweet and delicious. All right. And so I think we're done with that. that. Now we need a little bit of salt and pepper on that stuff. What's I got the salt that? and pepper right here. That's me some boss. I, I guess you've, I don't I'm know if you've ever heard of that. Pepper. Okay, not too much pepper, remember. Less is better, you can always add more. And salt. And this is what kind of salt, Tyler? It's kosher salt. Okay. All right, okay. I think we're ready. We're gonna put this in a 400 degree oven for 45 minutes to an hour. And I'm gonna stand around and watch. All right, uh, so our butternut squash is roasted. It's timer's about ready to go off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out of the oven and show you how how it looks and again it's, it's really hot the magic of uh, editing Just notice how the onions are nice and caramelized and tender well fairly tender and you can stick a fork into the squash with pretty relative ease um, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and let it cool off Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and take this and transfer it to something that's not as hot and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator to let it cool down. We're going, after it's cooled down, we, we'll puree all this, we'll peel off the, the skin and puree it and that'll be the base for our quesadillas. So, How long is it going to be in the refrigerator for? Until it's cold, 30 minutes, uh, maybe longer, maybe less, just depends on your idea of cold and whether or not the world's going to end due to uh, global warming. <laughs> that takes. One more time, I just want to reiterate how this, you're going to say, oh, that's burnt. But when it's ground up inside of the other stuff, it's going to be delicious. So, you're going to love it. Chicks dig it. That's why I get all the babes. This is because of these quesadillas. They're a babe magnet. <laughs> You're not filming, are you? Oh, you are? <clears throat> oh, really? So we got our butternut squash that's been roasted already in the shell. It's been cooled down. And now I'm just going to scoop it out of the, the shell and into a bowl with our onions and garlic and all that other nice stuff, a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper, and, and uh, just kind of scrape it and try and get all the all the the meat, and try not to get the skin. And that was real easy. So now I've got my butternut squash and onions all ready to go. The the out of out of its shell. 
and I'm going to put it, place it, my butternut squash and onion and garlic, into my food processor. And put the top on. Give it a nice grind. Take your little spatula. Give it one more grind. So we've got a nice puree, which looks like that. A little speckled. Um, give it a taste. Because we always taste. more salt, a tiny bit of pepper, and what I always do with my little processor is the little hole you can grab onto the blade and you just, you don't want the blade to fall out but you want to scoop around. Of course you could always just take the Laid out, but that's neither here nor there, I guess. <laughs> and that's there we go. Our butternut squash puree for our puree for our little quesadillas. We're gonna assemble our quesadillas. We've got our mise en place here. We've got our uh, butternut squash um, filling, manchego cheese. You can also use Jack or any cheese that you like. I've got my chipotle sour cream, that's kind of an after, that goes on top, not inside. Um, I have diced red bell pepper and some sliced green onions and flour tortillas. So I'm going to take my fancy little spatula and I'm going to smear a nice little amount of my um, butternut squash on the tortilla. It's a flour tortilla. Um, then we're just going to throw this into our hot um, cast iron pan that we used earlier for our pita. And it's already nice and oiled from the, I dumped out the oil and wiped it out a little bit. Now we're going to take a little, nice little handful of cheese, sprinkle it in there, um, a little Tiny handful of diced bell peppers, some green onions, and put another tortilla on there and press it down. I got it on medium on the big on the big burner. And we just wait. You know, <clears throat> flip it. It's Needs a little more oil in the pan. It's perfect. Are you filming? Uh huh. That's a little. It's real perfect. So we take, cut it. Just throw it in there like this, and then. Right. So there it is. You can serve it with this on on the very top of it, or on the side. Depends on how you like it. Um, Dab it on. Go ahead and do just a little, just a little bit like that. And maybe a little sprinkle of our red peppers and green onions to garnish. And there we got it. Our uh, butternut squash manchego cheese quesadillas with chipotle cr sour cream. Oh, All right, so now we're going to make the sauce for, the, for our butternut squash quesadillas, which are in the oven at 400 degrees. Cooking times may vary. Uh, we're going about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, just make sure it's tender, nice and golden brown on the top. That's the way to go. Your onions will be nice and caramelized. So we're going to make the sauce for that now, which consists of just sour cream, uh, more chipotle in adobo that's been ground up, some lime, salt, and pepper. That's all it is. 
And uh, so here we got uh, going to go ahead and just mix everything together. It's that simple. And just nice smoky sour cream. It's kind of kind of hot, but it's also you know it's nice nice flavors. And it's going to be the ultimate. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to take our lime. I'm going to cut something in front of the camera here. I like to rake the old table. I like to put my weight on it and roll it. And take your little knife, just slice it in half. Just like a squeeze from half a lime. And good to go. Garbage. Oh. Chadley's coat. <laughs> <laughs> little, close. little salt. Does your boyfriend throw like a girl too? <laughs> a little pepper. <laughs> a little white. <laughs> and That is our chipotle lime sour cream for our quesadillas. And I'm going to go ahead and drag those out of the drag those out of the oven and we'll get to going on those. We're going to make a salmon spread. It's an awesome salmon spread that I recently developed. We got Smoked salmon, red onion, capers, you getting that? Chipotle puree, which is just uh, chipotles, chipotles and adobo that's been ground up in the food processor. What's adobo? Adobo is a kind of a marinade. It's uh, chilies um, and vinegar, and it's usually what they pack chipotle chilies in. Does that come out of a can? Yeah. Okay. And, you, and you can get that in any grocery store these days. Uh, it's usually a specialty item. Um, cream cheese, 8 ounces, and a half a package of Borson cheese, which is a specialty cheese. Uh, once you start, you'll never want to go, go away from having that. No, it's Borson cheese. Is that hard to find? Uh, no. Specialty item. Just go into your cheese section at any grocery store. Every grocery store has Borson, I'm assuming. All right, uh, let's go with the salmon. No, go with the cream cheese, the onions, capers. Just Basically everything in. but the salmon. It's plugged in. It's you need a spatula. I was going to use my hands, but I guess not. <laughs> all right, so we we'll put in the cheese first. Yeah, it's, it, make sure it's that way it gets all softened up. Kind of mush it together. Okay. Can you see that down in there? Come on, your hand! <laughs> can you see into it? Uh-huh. Good? You can see well into it, I guess? Or you can see everything looks good? Alright, now, Ed, let's go ahead and add, did you, go ahead and add the, the rest of the, not the fish, but everything else. So just these three? Yeah. Yeah. You might need a little spoon to do the chipotle. So we got red onion? Red onion. Half a cup. Half cup red onion going in. And then capers. One tablespoon of capers. Tablespoon of capers. What actually is a caper? I'm just curious. Um, it is a berry of a bush grown in the Mediterranean. Um, you said that is brined. And that's about all I know. That's all we need to know. I didn't even know it was a berry. I thought it was long. Okay. All right. You got everything in? Yeah. Get it mix it up. It's, it's a small batch, so it's going to be a little more difficult. Now we're going to add this. Ooh. I'll let you Smoked do salmon. Yours. And. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to lick the spoon. <laughs> Alright, are we back on? Yeah, kick it back on just real low and let it. Once it breaks up pretty good, you can actually kick it on a little higher. 
to start spraying cheese at the camera. I hope everybody has a red coat on this. Alright, now we just gotta taste it and oh. season it. Right. And then it's ready to roll. And I'm gonna take a taste and uh... Taste it. Well, you threw away the... Yeah, I brought a clean one for you. We can't eat off the same spoon here, I guess. Because I have a blister on my lip. Mmm! <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good for a uh, fish that swims upstream. Camera girl, would you like to try some, Claire Shadley? Oh my God. That's pretty damn good. Oh. Darn. Yeah, um, I'm going to say no salt, no I don't think there's anything. It's perfect. And, all right, so now that we made the spread, which was great, um, we are going to... Put up some pita bread here. Fry up some pita. Pan fried pita. Got a hot pan. Hot Good. pan, iron skillet. Bitchin'. Alright. Gonna dump some olive oil in there and get it nice and hot also. And what do we got it on heat? Medium? I've heat? got it on a medium. Okay, so how long did you heat the pan before we put it the was, oil in? It was on for about three minutes. Alright, so we had a dry skillet, threw it on a burner. Let it get nice and hot and about medium high. Then we throw in the oil, turn it down a little bit around medium. Yeah, I keep it at medium the whole time. Okay, so we're not going to try to draw smoke or anything. Yeah, like you don't want to burn the olive oil because we're using olive oil. We're using extra virgin olive oil here. You don't want to get it too hot because it's going to burn. Um, but you want to get it hot enough so that we can take our pita and get it crispy. And pita that's been fried is one of the best things in the world. I'm going to go ahead and drop in my first. Sassy. Are you getting this? Oh, yeah. Nice and close. And turn it up a little bit more because the, the bread's going to suck out a lot of the heat. And just let it fry. So basically, we got. Giddy up, that's how, that's what I wanted it to do yeah. right away. Could I get a beverage, please? <clears throat> Perfect. Oh, nice. Wow. Oh, oh my God! God. Be careful. My eyes! <laughs> All right, we'll pull this out. Putting it on the paper towel. Okay. And we're going to do it with one more. Sweet. Just give it a little shake. We're doing about... I would say one quarter inch of oil in a 12, what is that, 12 inch? Just a 12 inch J pan, frying pan, uh, just like grandma used to have. And look at that, that one, that is a masterpiece right there. You getting that? Yep. That is a masterpiece. All right, so we got some uh, pan fried pita for our smoked salmon spread. Uh, Next on, on our menu is going to be a cranberry and Granny Smith apple chutney that's going to go with our brie. <clears throat> that's my next. Whoa. Uh-oh. That's creepy. What happened? I've never seen this before. I'm, this is the first time I've ever bought brie. No, I'm it's brie in a can? Brie in a can. Oh. That's kind of like so cheap. It might be how it has such a long shelf life, too. Ah, crap, we should be getting this. Uh, filming it. Oh, you are? Pour it. Oh, sweet. Canned brie. <laughs> hey, what is brie? <laughs> I wish I knew. <laughs> it's a soft, ripened cheese from France um, in a funny little rind. Mm. Are you... Yep. Oh, my bad. <laughs> wow. Uh, I really don't know the technical stuff right off the top of my head, but that's what it looks like when it sits out. It gets, when it sits out, it gets very runny, and uh, it's kind of smells kind of like a moist basement, musty. Um, so that's going to be the part of our next thing, which uh, leads us to uh, cranberry granite, gran. Granny Smith apple chutney uh, to go with our brie. Ed, 
You want to grab the stuff out of the fridge? I shall do that. Who is Granny Smith? Um, I think it's actually Smythe. Oh. Granny Smythe. All right. All right, what do we got here? We have plastic wrap. We have some, the star is our cranberries, fresh, 12 ounce bag. Uh, they're in season right now. Super tart. Oh, God, yes, they are. <laughs> mm, I don't recommend that to anybody at home. And that's why most times you see cranberries cooked because they're tart and they need lots of sugar. They have tons of pectin in them, which I couldn't explain what that is either. It's basically a jelly form. I don't know, technically, but that's what, when I when we cook it down, it's gonna turn into a real thick, goopy syrup. We got some Granny Smith apples. We got some mint, uh, diced ginger. Uh, yeah, that measurements good. are gonna be Fresh ginger. Written out on after the show. This is fresh diced ginger. A couple cloves of garlic minced. About half a cup, third of a cup of uh, diced red onion. I've got a uh, third cup of sugar and like a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. Probably get it like this. And then I also have for our spices, I have some dried red chili some cinnamon stick that's been broken up into pieces, some green cardamoms. Now, is all of this, as far as the spices go, cardamoms and things like that, is that regular? I mean, you can get that at a regular store, or do you have to go to a specialty store to find it? You can. Um, <coughs> black pepper's in there also. Um, as far as the, as far as all Indian spices, such as the cardamom and the cinnamon, I have a tendency to get them from Indian specialty markets because it's way less expensive. And um, we do have those in Lincoln. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have an Indian uh, Indian grocery store in Lincoln, and we have you know you can get these bulk spices in plenty of places, and uh, that's the way to go. Especially if you use a lot, and you know when they're whole, they stay fresher longer. So you have a cardamom pod that will stay together a lot longer than the ground up cardamom that you buy for six dollars at the grocery store in a little tiny 0.5 ounce container. Okay, now the uh, Granny Smythe <clears throat> apple, what is uh, that all about? Why is it different? Or why is it even recognized as being Granny Smythe? It's as opposed to just a regular apple that you just pull out of the aisle. Is I, it way it's grown or is it, I noticed it's green. Smythe <clears throat> was a joke. Does it have a carbon footprint? <laughs> <laughs> And Smythe isn't really its name. But. I know, I'm joking. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's far tartar. There's less tartar, tart. It's more tart. It has less sugar in it, um, and it holds up a lot better when you cook it. See? It doesn't turn to complete mush. Far tartar, ten times fast. Far tartar, ten times, <laughs> ten times longer. <laughs> okay, we'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're going to back, move back over to the stove. So now we're going to make a cranberry Granny Smith apple chutney, or as I like to call it, cranberry Granny Smythe. Uh, we've got a little pan here that's still wet from washing it, <laughs> so I'm letting it get hot. Always get a hot pan, room temperature oil. Hot pan, cool oil. That's that's the that's the one of the first rules when you're learning how to saute. Great. Could I get um, that a beverage that was mine? That could be the first thing that you hand around. Let me go. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth. All right. So we got our hot pan. I don't know how big it is. Buy these at the restaurant supply house and they're they'll last you pretty much more than your your life so they're a good thing to have they're inexpensive too so a little bit of olive oil in the pan get it nice and hot and the first thing I want is uh, let's go with the spices first the whole spices we got three dried chilies sure. no. 
three dried chilies, uh, about a cinnamon stick broken up, five cardamom pods, and five black peppercorns. And we're going to just go ahead and once the oil is nice and warm, we're going to throw that in and swish it around. It's going to see little bubbles kind of starting to form around the, the spice. We're toasting it, basically letting out the oils. Let that go for 30 seconds, 40 seconds, just to release the oils, like I said, and kind of start to fill up the house with a nice smell. Get rid of that dirty old junky dead mouse smell that so many houses have. And you, I wish you had smell a vision here. I don't know, you guys smell that? The gallery smells it. The gallery smells it? All right, so you see it's everything's kind of starting to hear. All right, so we got this between medium and medium high heat. Right? Medium and medium high heat. Okay, Sorry. So I'm is just... that where we had the pan set at when we started? I started it at medium, medium high. Medium, medium high. Then we just throw in, get the pan nice and hot. Then we throw in the oil. Yep. And then we just toss in those spices, and there's is there a look to its doneness, or are we just going by aromatics? No, that's air, we're going by aromatics. So when you and can... it smells good to me, so now I'm going to take the red onion, and I'm going to toss that in there, and you can hear a nice little sizzle. And that's a good sign. Give it a stir, and I'm going to need the. I'm going to turn down the heat just a tiny bit, just to keep stuff from burning. I'm going to need uh, a little bit of ginger and garlic. I'm going to go ahead and toss a little tiny bit of salt in there just to kind of release some of the juices. What kind of salt is that? Kosher salt. That's the juice that we have. That joke gets better every time, Ed. <laughs> kind of like wine. <laughs> wine gets better with time, not every time. Uh, well, maybe. All right, and then a little garlic, and the garlic is the one that's going to burn the quickest, so you got to keep an eye on that, and that's another reason I add the salt, is it kind of draws out the moisture and kind of keeps it from burning. No, sort of. burnt garlic is, I, that, that's pretty much just the it's, worst. Yeah, it's not a good... So you really have to eye this, not walk yeah, this away is, from the pan and go out and try and entertain people or no, anything like so, that. Stay on top of it. You want to... And you want to saute this just for a minute. You want to get a little bit, a little bit of color on the onions and the garlic isn't going to kill you. Toasted garlic tastes really good. Burnt garlic, like I said, doesn't taste good at all. And so, I'm going to go ahead and add the Granny Smythe apples. These have been cut. These were cut in advance. I drizzled them with a little. Uh, lemon juice and they look like I just cut them two minutes ago so lemon juice a little acidulated water and that'll make your lemon your apples stay nice and white they won't turn all dark and brown and grotesque so the lemon juice is kind of just I don't know it's kind a, of a protectant yeah it's kind of like a force field not a force field it's like a shield it's like Star Wars it's yeah or <laughs> Star Trek for <laughs> Depending on what kind of guy you are, I'm a Star Trek guy more, I think. Um, I'm a heterosexual myself. <laughs> All right, and now I'm going to add a 12-ounce bag of cranberries. Fresh cranberries. They're in season right now, so it only makes sense to use stuff that's in season. I, I guess I could have gone into that earlier about the seasonality of stuff. You, that's why we're doing butternut squash for our quesadillas, because... It would make sense to use something like, oh, I don't know, um, tomatoes. Cucumbers. Using tomatoes or cucumbers right now would make no sense at all because it's like 30 degrees outside. And the recipe doesn't call for it, so <laughs> it's probably good to use what the recipe says. Okay, so we're, we get this kind of coated, and now we're going to take the sugar. And I'm only hoping to God that this is enough sugar. Because I just threw this recipe together in a matter of minutes without trying it out. So let's see what happens. Mm. 
And how long do we have to cook this? For? We're gonna have to cook this until it's gonna take a little while. You want now we've got the sugar on there. I'm gonna go ahead and take the red wine vinegar and dump that on it. And I'm gonna give it another stir, and then I'm gonna put a lid on it and lower the heat down to maybe medium medium low somewhere between those two so that what this is basically going to do is with all the sugars everything involved in this it's going to create like its own syrup yeah it's going to be kind of like a jelly a chutney so it'll be its own marinade a, thing. a chutney by definition is a fruit or vegetable cooked in sugar and vinegar um and that's based that's exactly what this is it's just it's kind of like a, it's an Indian jelly. East Indian jelly is all it is. It's sweet, it's savory, it's spicy, it's sour. It's got all the elements that people love. And so I covered it and we're gonna turn it down just a hair and we're gonna walk away from it for five minutes. And we'll come back to it and it'll be beautiful. All right. Our chutney's been going at about between medium low and medium, or medium and medium low, covered for about 10, 15 minutes. And it starts to break down and turn into this jelly. And this is almost exactly how I want it. Nice and chunky. You can still see the pieces of apple. You can still see the cranberries, but they're nicely cooked. Uh, if I could get a tasting spoon, we could taste this and tell, you, tell the people if this recipe is worth a crap or not. Tasting spoon patrol. Is this clean? Uh, well, if my armpit's clean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. Get a, yeah, give me another one for Ed. And the camera girl. Um, real close up. Thanks, Johnny. Real close. <laughs> it's hot? Just... <laughs> yeah, I bet. I don't want really scolding, burning wax on my. You don't look too convinced. Could use more sugar. Oh, you said it wasn't enough sugar. I was worried that it wasn't going to be enough sugar. But yeah, it's real tart. So after tasting, it's proved to be a little tart. So I'm going to addendum I'm gonna add I'm okay uh, <laughs> thanks. I'm trying to make myself sound smarter than I'm I'm gonna add one more third of a cup of sugar but this time I'm gonna use brown sugar and hopefully that'll fix it and I will fix it in the recipe so that it's people don't think it's junk Okay. <laughs> edit, edit, edit. All right. Okay. So now I'm tasting it after it's been adjusted. And I guess that's something I could say. It's you always taste, always taste when you're cooking stuff so that you know because sometimes you could stumble into something that's not good, but there's always ways to fix it. This needed more sugar. So I added more sugar. And now I'm tasting it to see if that was a proper amount of sugar. So. Much better. It's delicious. And it goes well with cheese. Giddy up.